Hi there, this is James Neighbors. I'm the founder of Overpasses for America. Perhaps you've never met me before, perhaps you've never seen me before, perhaps you don't even know who I am or realize that I was the founder of Overpasses for America. Those of you that have been with us for a bit know that we started out as another name and then changed our focus to basically uh, address the larger need. But uh, I've never made one of these addresses before, so please forgive me if it's not perfectly professionally done. But it's, just know that this is from the heart. For everybody in overpasses, I don't know how to emphasize to you enough the need for us to get out and protest. Not necessarily rally for any political... Uh, candidate that you like because that's caused a lot of division between the Trump and the Cruz crowds. Uh, the fact of the matter is both crowds are patriotic and the behavior between the two parties or camps towards one another honestly is shameful. Anybody that's been attacking people ought to be ashamed of themselves. I have done my best to stay neutral and to let everybody decide what it was that they wanted, who it was that they wanted to support, because that's the American way. It's not my, not my place to tell you who to vote for and who to support. But the time is coming. The nominee, whether you like it or not, is about to be chosen, whether you like who it is or not, is about to be chosen. We all know who the majority it has the majority, and the only way anyone else is going to get it is by hook and by crook by the RNC. You know it, I know it, everybody knows it, including the candidates. But I don't want to stay on that because it is such a divisive topic. What I do want to say to 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 emphasize to everybody is that you may have lost heart. You may be tired. You may feel without hope. And indeed, we are in very, very dark times today. We are in the year 2016. And we have quite possibly the most important election in this nation's history. The most important, not halfway important, not kind of important, not, uh, not, not mildly important, the most important. Because I don't care what you think about Trump or Cruz, you can hate them with, you know, them, one of them or both of them with everything you have. But if you think that either of them will be as bad for America and for you and me as Hillary, the butcher of Benghazi Clinton, you need to pull your head out of your ass because she is pure evil. Nobody in this world is perfect and neither are any of the other candidates, but Hillary Clinton is pure evil. If you don't know this by now, you have not been paying attention. Now, we have some state groups that have no leaders. We have state groups with leaders that haven't been doing anything. Why? Honestly, I couldn't tell you. Only you can answer that. But if you're in a state within overpasses that does not have a state leader, then if you consider yourself a patriot, then you need to step up. And you need to find your spine and you need to lead that group. You may not want to. You, you know, nobody wants to. Do you think that I wanted to start Overpasses for America and become, you know, a target to paint a big target on my back? Do you think I wanted that? If you do, if you think I did this, if you think I started Overpasses for my own fame or to get rich, God, I wish, I wish. I make more than I make I make less than minimum wage right now with what I'm doing for this movement and it's all through my work not yours Now I do get help from people on things from time to time and without the national leaders Fred Schneider Robert Haynes 
Debbie Bartkus, and now Carol from Oregon, who stepped up to the plate in Oregon and has led the charge against the, the Bureau of Land Management and the feds in Oregon, you know, this movement would not be going anywhere. If not for them, this movement would not be going anywhere. I'm just one man. And if not for those people, we wouldn't be doing anything. We would be collecting cobwebs on Facebook, which unfortunately, some of your groups are. And you may consider yourself a state leader, but um, are you leading? Some of you are. And if you are, congratulations. You're doing what it takes to be a patriot. You're doing what it takes that you can do in your time and in your way to save this nation. But for those of you that are in a state group and you're, group, and you're supposed to be a state leader and you're not doing anything, well, first off, you're not doing your nation any good. You're not doing this movement any good. And honestly, you're, 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 if, you know, if you call yourself a Christian, well, you're not being a very good Christian. And you may ask, well, why is that? And how can you dare say that to me? Well, I'll tell you how I dare say it to you. Because it clearly states in the Bible that faith without acts is dead. Now, acts do not create faith. But if you say you have faith and you are not acting, then your faith is dead. If you have no faith, guess what? You might as well just be an atheist. You might as well just be a Muslim. You might as well be a, anything but a Christian because you're disobeying your Lord. You're disobeying the man that created you. You're disobeying your creator by not acting on your faith. I personally believe that the Constitution was inspired by God himself because we are the first nation in the history of the world to have given prosperity and freedom on a level that we have here in the United States. Now, are we perfect? No. Why are we not perfect? Because we're humans. Because our leaders are humans. Unfortunately, unfortunately now, we have been infiltrated at the highest levels by people with very nefarious means. You can say you don't believe in a one that there's a plot to create one a one world government or a new world order. And honestly, just saying it sounds like, you know, I, I feel like I've, I've just put my tinfoil hat on because I used to scoff at those notions so much. But if you don't notice those things going on, you need to wake up. The fact of the matter is this entire politically correct agenda the Black Lives Matter movement, the moveon.orgs, and things like, you know, things like that are all part of an agenda. The, the climate change, global warming, uh, sustainable development, and the United Nations, they are all trying to put us under their thumb. And Hillary Rodham Clinton is their mouthpiece. She has already said that we need Australia's uh, Australia type gun confiscation. She said that recently. This isn't last year, this isn't 5 years ago. This was on her campaign trail. She is out campaigning to come take your guns away. Really? That's what she said. She is going to take your guns away. Now, if you can look back at the next 7 years, and think we can survive another administration that will be Obama on turbo drive with nitrous and rocket engines attached? Well, then by all means, just sit at home and go kumbaya, and 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 you know, you know, sing you know, sing Hakuna Matata with your spineless jellyfish friends who won't get off their butts. But if you think, if you think that there's even the remotest chance that Hillary Clinton is going to do her worst to destroy this nation, do her most to crush freedom, to do everything she can to shred the Constitution and erase it from history. If you have any, any, oh, if you think that's even remotely possible, then you need to get off your ass. 
You need to quit making excuses. Oh, I'm sick. I'm hurt. Blah, blah, blah. You know what? what? I could give you a laundry list of things that's wrong with me, and I'm going to give you a little bit of a list right now. One, I have degenerative disc disease going completely down my spine. I have two vertebrae fused together, and they wanted to fuse four or more. I've got a, compl a knee that is the essential equivalent of an 80-year-old man because it has donated bone tissue, donated tissue in it from the bone to the tendons to the blood vessels. I've got arthritis in this shoulder. I've had 13 surgeries. I've, I've had 20 kidney stones, a dozen of which had to be surgically removed. I've got a failing right kidney. I've got plantar fasciitis in my freaking heel. I can't even walk. The discs in my lower back are starting to give out. I don't know from one day to the next if I'm going to be able to walk or if my legs are going to drop out from underneath me whenever I stand up. I don't know that. I don't know that. But you know what I do? You know what I do? I put all that aside. I put all that aside and I do everything that I can. Sometimes I can't do anything, but every chance I get, every chance I get, I'm doing something. I'm doing something. So unless you're dying and you can't even get out of a bed, and if you are in that way, God bless you, and I hope you get better somehow. But if you're not, if you aren't dying then you have no excuse except you don't care enough to get up off your butt. You don't like that? Tough. Quit. I don't need sitters. This movement doesn't need sitters. We don't need people that are going to sit around and pretend they're keyboard warriors. We're going to change the world because we're typing away on Facebook. No, that's not going to change the world. You know what? We stopped amnesty in 2014. You think we can't get things done in this country? Try again. Congress and the president saw a level of outrage against one thing so much across this nation that they stopped. They stopped. And we did that. If you were out there protesting against amnesty in July of 2014, guess what? You helped stop the destruction of this nation. Immediate destruction of this nation. But if you're just sitting around making excuses, you know, whatever happens to you, you brought on yourself. If Hillary comes becomes president and she comes knocking on your door with her or her goon squads come knocking on your door or kicking in your door because you're part of overpasses or because you have guns, uh, guess what? It's your own fault. Don't be mad at Hillary, because she's already told you what she's going to do. So if you don't listen to her when she says she's going to confiscate guns, when her entire agenda is against the Constitution and against the United States, when that happens, you might as well just bend over. You might as well just bend over and take it. Take it like a champ, because you brought it on yourself. So you can be offended at my language. You can be offended at my demeanor. I, I, honestly, I don't care. If just mere words hurt you, well then you are just one sad individual. But what you need to do is you need to dig down deep inside yourself. I need to find, you need to find whatever it's going to take to motivate you, whether it be for yourself, whether it be for your children, whether it be for your wife, your grandparents, your sister's kids, your brother's kids, people you don't even know, or just the fact to be a part of saving this nation. Whatever it takes to motivate you, you need to get out there. If you do nothing else, if you do nothing else, then have anti-Hillary protests. Then do it. Then do it. I don't care what kind of protest you do, but we, we well, actually I do. We've got to have anti-Hillary protests. We have got to motivate the American people to get out and make sure that that evil whore of Babylon is never put in our hallowed White House. And if you don't see that as important, I honestly don't know what to do with you. What I do know is that you'll be judged one day after this life is done and possibly during this life. But if you sit by and let evil, evil triumph, you will be judged for that. So the question you have to ask yourself is what next? What can I do? What can you do? What can all of us do? 
the first thing that we all need to do is get back busy in our groups. Get back busy with this movement. Get back to recruiting like we did the first three months of this movement when we were on pace to have over half a million people inside of a year just in our state groups. Well, guess what? We're not even 10% of that because people got complacent. They saw it get busy. Oh, we don't have to do anything else. We don't have to do anything else. Well, I'll tell you what. Recruiting is probably the most important thing to this movement because people are going to die. Unfortunately, we've lost some outstanding patriots, and God bless their souls. God bless their souls because they did what they could until they couldn't do no more. Will you? Have you? The fact of the matter is, time is very short. And if we don't act with haste, this country is finished. Freedom is finished. I am in the process right now of trying to sell my car, cash in my retirement, so I can buy a pickup truck and a travel trailer. And if Hillary's elected, I'm going to bug out. I'm going to disappear and go into hiding. I can't tell you what I'm going to do next. I can't tell you what I'm going to do next because the less you know, the better. But suffice it to say, if she's elected president, this country has gone to hell. And whatever happens next, we brought upon ourselves. Whatever's happening now, we brought upon ourselves. How do you think these people in D.C. got to where they are now? Because we were complacent. We were living in the lap of luxury and the greatest nation in the world, and we just let it go on by. We just ignored everything that was happening, and here we are today. Here we are today with rigged elections, and you can look at the Democrat side, and I don't like Bernie Sanders one bit, but all you got to do is look at what's going on there. He's getting screwed. He ought to be the Democratic nominee by a long shot. He's won more states, and she just keeps walking away with delegates. Well, how's that happen? Because the government is completely corrupt. Because the Democrats are beyond corrupt. They're not even savable. They should be disbanded. And anybody in office that is a Democrat should be removed, tarred and feathered, flogged like the Romans did Jesus, and deported to, I don't know, the core of the sun. Because they're not even humans. They're certainly not Americans. They're definitely not patriots. And, you know, you could say, well, why are you picking on the Democrats? Well, I'm not. Because guess what? Rhinos are Democrats. Democrats are communists. And rhinos are Democrats. Now, now that you know that little simple formula... Look at, our, look at our federal government and tell me how much of it is looking out for us. Look at your state government. If you want to know where the rot starts, there it is. It's on our level. It's on our states. It's on our cities. The rot, the infection begins. The rot and the infection begins at home, in our home states. We elect these people. They go up to D.C. And all it is is a graduation to the corruption party. I rambled on a lot longer than I meant to. I'm going to go ahead and cut this short. But if you can't find yourself motivated to get out and do something to save this country, why are you even in overpasses? Seriously, ask yourself, why am I here? Why am I here? Why am I not doing something? If you can't come up with an answer as to why you can do something, just quit. You know, you're, you're not doing anybody any good, and you're just riding on the coattails, for, you know, I don't know, maybe, maybe if, if we happen to save the country, you can say, oh, I was a part of it. Well, in your soul, you know you weren't, if you aren't doing anything. And God knows that, too. He knows that you were lying. If you, if you say you were a part of this thing and you didn't do anything, God knows you're lying. Then you'll have to answer for that. You'll have to answer for that. But all I know is this. I will not live in a prison nation. If Hillary Clinton is elected, that is what America becomes. You may not like Cruz, and you may not like Trump, but neither one of them has a trail of bodies leading behind or following behind them all the way back to Arkansas. Hillary Clinton has does has had dozens of people killed in her rise to power, and then if you hadn't, if you've forgotten about it, oh. What about those four dead in Benghazi that created ISIS? Six billion dollars in state funds missing, 400 man-pad surface-to-air missiles, and an entire warehouse of weapons 
And then what do you know? Within a very short time after that, we have this little creation called ISIS. It's starting to chop people's heads off. They're starting to infiltrate this country, and it's all on Hillary. So if you want to have jihad waved, waged in the United States, let her get in office. If you want to see your kids get, get their heads cut off, if you want to see your daughters brutally raped and forced to wear a burqa, do nothing. Do nothing. Just let those satanic bastards overrun this nation. Because if Hillary Clinton becomes president, that's what's going to happen. Uh, every single illegal alien criminal is going to be here. There will be increased chaos in these streets. And the entire purpose of it is to slam tyranny down on us. To make things so bad here, we have to ask for outside help. We have to ask for outside help to maintain order in our country. And when that happens, America is dead. America is dead. And your lack of action will be part of the reason it happened. So make a choice. Thank you. God bless America. And if you have been out doing something, God bless you. And thank you from the bottom of my heart. I'm out.